So everything in that plan is working exactly like clockwork. And the problem is the American people, Alex, all of you, the American people that still believe that you would you still believe that America is or was or whatever, anybody still believes in America, guys, you're going to have to suit up. You're going to have to suit up. You can say, hey, I'm not going to get involved. I'm not going to do whatever. Yeah, you are. You're either going to lose it by giving up or you're going to stand and you're going to stand tall and you're going to tell the truth. Well, you that's know? the thing is, is this isn't going to be boss hog tyranny like you were involved in, just good old boy stuff. They want to break the system forever, but break then, our will and domesticate us. This is a hardcore tyranny. And it is. I mean, they just hate prosperity. They say we didn't build our businesses. Uh, they tell people in the third world they can't have air conditioning or cars while they're on jumbo jets. I mean, these are some yep. nasty people. Jakari Jackson, you've been working here a couple years doing a great job. Uh, we're about to send you and whoever else you think you want to go with you um, up to South Carolina to cover all this tragic event. Um, you talk about support. I didn't even plug anything last hour. We're going to plug right now and also plug Mr. Nichols, who's lost everything doing this. Uh, but that's why we need to get more reporters hired, too, so we have enough to always cover all these things as things heat up. Uh, but, Jakari, what is it like just, just to see it all for yourself? I mean, here it is. Um, WTOC Television, police say he was on Suboxone, a Schedule Three narcotic, which is basically a antipsychotic slash amnesic mind control drug. Yeah. Um, I mean, of course we knew that was coming. It's up on InfoWars.com. Um, it's just so sad because we really are being conquered at a fundamental spiritual or, or cellular level. Uh, I feel whipped. I feel empty. I feel enslaved. And, and what's sad is I know this is just the, the, the feeling of what's coming. You know, the echo from the future. Because we're heading towards this wall. I'm yelling. I can hear the, you know, it's bouncing back like sonar. I can see what's there. I don't know what allegory. It makes me sick. And I've never felt sick talking about the New World Order. But to see it really coming into view, to see them really grabbing people's bank accounts now in Europe, getting ready for that collapse, to really see all this, Shikari. And I'm, and I'm not saying I'm a whipped person. It's the feeling of knowing that they want the power. They want to whip us. They want to dominate us and break prosperity and break goodness because they're evil. Mm -hmm. I think it's that coming up against, brushing up against evil. And it won't leave. It won't back off. It won't shut up. It's dumbing everybody down. It, it, it's, it's like being stuck in a room with somebody you hate. I think that's the best allegory. And we're going to get Mr. Nichols' take on it. But what's your take on that? Well, you know, when you see all this stuff coming down, just like Larry was talking about 20 years ago, you know, I was a, a small child, but I'm trying to get in the mindset of somebody 20 years ago. Do they really, well, of course you knew, Alex, but, you know, what's the mindset of people back then? Could they imagine something like this? You know, if you said, you know, no. 2015, we'll have all these things going on, the things with Russia, the things here domestically. And Larry, of course, says no. And it, it's very interesting to me the, how the whole thing is coming about. And how many people are still blind to it? You know, Well, exactly. They're just maneuvering right now. They're just, man 20 years ago, they were getting everything set up. You know, they got the derivatives in. They got the banking laws changed. It was all the Clintons and the globalists around them. And now he went to Bilderberg. And now Hillary's got her people at Bilderberg, nobody else. And now they're getting ready to finish us off. Uh, is that an accurate Jigari, statement, Larry? Jigari, let me say something, Jagari. Sure. 20 years ago, the average credit card debt to a household when Bill Clinton took office was around 5000 <clears throat> When he left office, the average family owed sixty something thousand dollars in credit cards, and it was built based off of a false economy system. That's what they've been building, Alex. That's what you're talking about. Everything feels like it's about to blow. We've lived off a false economy with these people being led through the nose in Jakarta. I'll tell you what it felt like 20 years ago. Alex remembers this guy, Larry Nichols, comes on this program telling what's coming, which seems so unimaginable. It sounded it like was. a poor Class B horror flick. But it was true. It was true. And now, Alex, 
what you're feeling is you're actually seeing that which you've known about within in your heart of hearts because of being an American you didn't think it could actually happen for sure. You thought, but you couldn't see it for sure. Now you're seeing it for sure, and it's like a freight train, guys, that we're standing out here on the tracks, and we're looking at each other and saying, uh, Alex, Corey, uh, me, which one of us going to stand up in this track and stop that train? Because that's what it is. And guys, these play, people play rough. Alex is not kidding you. These people play rough. But nobody believes it. Well, ask you know, ask Vince Foster. He has, gosh, that, anyway, fifty some odd people that I knew that I had to testify that ended up dead. No, Bill and Hillary didn't kill them. But the system that wants them in power, the mob, they act on their own. They don't need Bill and Hillary. You know, it's just like this thing with these emails. Guys, do y'all really believe that an Obama heir to Clinton Justice Department is going to investigate Hillary? You've heard that Gowdy guy say, you know, hey, I can't, from this committee, I can't go issue a subpoena. No, we can't. It's all being played. Vayner, McConnell, they're playing this like a Stradivarius. And you know that because if you are a Tea Party, you got to ask yourself this. If you're a member of the Tea Party, you would be considered the base of the Republican Party, wouldn't you? You're exactly the kind of person that the party was built, the, the following up the moral majority. Yes. And yet the Republicans turn on them. Turn on them and commit $50 million to defeat them, not just at the presidential level, congressional level, but at the dog catcher level. They despise the Tea Party because they know the one thing that I know. The Tea Party, if it will, if it can be led, the Tea Party can take over the RNC. And if we took over the RNC, we could take back our country with a choice. But pretty soon, it's not going to be a choice. Once those Mexicans are made to be able to vote, folks, you will have seen the last national election in this country's history. And that's the plan. I, uh, th there's also a blindness to these corporate mafias and that they all want their interest, but then they don't yep. really think about, at least on the surface, how that connects down the road. I mean, all that money in the world and power is going to be worthless if we have nuclear war with the Russians. I mean, well, I mean, it's hardcore. I mean, yeah, you know... And as you think of all these CEOs, why do you think these CEOs are raping these country companies with these huge ungodly salaries and bonuses? They know that can't exist. They're getting so much money. The powerful CEOs in this country know, Alex, that this thing's going down and they're raising as much money for themselves as they can so they and their families will be safe. I got news for them. You ain't gonna not, you're not gonna find an island in this world that you're gonna be able to buy and be safe. Not wow, let's watch. come back and hear from Larry Nichols. Because <laughs> I was on air for most of the Clinton administration right from the start, a few years into it, and I witnessed it. And uh, I remember seeing the Clinton Chronicles right away and putting it on Access TV myself and getting threats over it. Democratic Party basically called me up and said, we wanna hire you to work for us. And it was like high level people. And uh, they said, you stop talking about about Bill Clinton. And then when I kept doing it, they started threatening me. And I was like, well, go ahead and do something. And then a month later, they came and beat me up. I mean, I fought back, but I mean, that, people don't play games. And uh, I mean, I don't want to sound dramatic here, but I mean, it was the Clintons. I mean, they, they, they were telling me, shut up and stop talking about Waco. And they seemed surprised that I started fighting back. Uh, and uh, that'll get you motivated when four guys are punching you. And I, I just can't believe we're in such bondage and it's all sold by trendiness and the rest of it. I want to get into what this world's going to look like if they're able to take total control as they're trying to do briefly. Larry's going to join us for like an hour and a half next Tuesday. Shikari Jackson's going to be on the news tonight covering more of this 7 o'clock uh, with the rest of the crew. Uh, this whole race war they're trying to start. People, you notice I'm really calm right now. I've been frantically trying to stop this. Now that so much of it's going through, we're stopping some of it. I'm more just in 
grieving for myself and the country and all of us because we're in deep crap. I mean, I mean, we're in the hands of some really bad people, and we've been sold out by the Republican leadership. And uh, Larry, I, I remember this, you did this years ago, and I know you don't like to push people to support you, but I know you lost everything you had doing this, and I know your book's out of print when I asked you about that. Uh, how do folks support you or if folks want to talk to you, get you to speak to their group or come on their show? I know you give out your home number and your, your address for folks, so why don't you give that out for people? Well, you bet. Look, my phone number is 440-897-0611. My address is 58 Kensington Drive, Conway, Arkansas, 72034. And Alex, I know people are going, how many people have you ever had on the show that give out their home number, their home address? Guys, under this regime, you ain't going to hide. You're not going to hide. There's no sense in it. Either we get together, either we form up, or forever shut your mouth. Because this thing is coming down. And next week, Alex, it'll go. I'd like to talk next week about the 450 troops going to Saudi Arabia, to the Anbar province. Yeah, believe it or not, folks, that's connected to this. That's 450 people going on what they call the uh, lily pad type operation. I've been on many of them, and it's a death trap. Why? Why would you send 450 of our best into a death trap, especially when you just had the Secretary of Defense and the head of the Joint Chief of Staff yesterday in a committee and Ornero, the Marine General, they're all saying it won't work. Why? Why all right. Well, Larry, we're going to talk to you next Tuesday. Be safe, sir. Uh, and uh, uh, I really appreciate you giving us the time today. And, of course, we're going to have you on a lot more as we enter the Clinton nightmare uh, 2.0. So thank you so much, sir. You bet. Thank you, Alex. Thank you. Thank you. Uh,